How's it going, everybody? Welcome to uh, the first episode of The Bachelor, the luxury watch edition of The Bachelor. Um, we're just going to try to uh, hopefully cue the thing. Uh, we're picking out my first luxury watch. Those of you who don't know us, this is Ryan. I'm Andrew. We're the co-founders of CaseAndCrown.com. Um, and I I am more of a, a lay watch enthusiast. I'm just getting into the, the watch space and the watch industry. Ryan's our product specialist at Case and Crown. He's been doing, he's been following watches. He's had a love for watches his whole life. Um, so he knows a little bit more about watches. I've re never really owned accessories, um, never really worn uh, watches. So we're going to pick out my first luxury watch. So uh, based on a lot of other product reviews we've done, based on uh, um, some some discussions we've had, uh, watches, luxury watches at certain price points, we've picked out 12, the 12 contestants uh, for my first luxury watch. Um, Ryan is going to uh, quickly reveal the, the 12 contestants, uh, reveal them to you, introduce Introduce them to you, um, and then we're going to kind of, as the bachelor does, uh, whittle down. I'll be giving to roses. I'll be giving roses to each watch um, as we progress through, and ultimately decide on my first luxury watch. All right. Uh, so, so without further ado, Ryan, why don't you introduce us to the twelve contestants? All right. First up, Super Ocean Heritage Two B Twenty. Uh, it's coming in at forty-six millimeter. This has a ceramic bezel. Really is a fantastic, in my mind, competitor to the Rolex Submariner. But it, downside, it's a little bit bigger than the Sub. Plus side, it's about half the price, and you can find it and purchase it. So definitely uh, some upside worth mentioning. Next up, we have the Rolex Explorer 2, specifically looking at the polar dial, uh, the reference number 16570. Uh I love this piece. I think for the longest time, this was probably the best value in Rolex sports uh, watches. You're starting to st see this one climb up. You used to be able to get it for probably somewhere in the high fours. Now you're starting to really see it catch fire along with all the other sports models. And it's trading right in the uh, mid sixes right now. But still, still, uh, still a fantastic value uh, within the, the crazy world of Rolex steel sports. Next up, we have the Zenith El Primero. Specifically, we're looking at the tricolor dial uh, with the, the two grayscale subdials and the third blue uh, dial. This is obviously a legendary uh, first high speed chrono uh, with an integrated uh, chronograph module. Love this piece. I think this does sporty, and I think you could do it uh, at uh, also a lot of more formal events. Saw a guy wearing this at a wedding last summer. Thought it looked fantastic, and I'm not a big fan of chronographs with suits, but it, but he pulled it off nicely. Made me rethink some things. Next up, we have the Reverso by Giger Lecoult. Uh, we're talking specifically about the classic large with the small second this is the new iteration that you'll see now it's currently in ad's uh i love it this one doesn't have a date which is my favorite uh complication but it does have very classy small seconds at six o'clock with the plain stainless steel case back perfect for engraving uh putting the occasion for the purchase and the new ones come on the casafaliano leather strap which is absolutely gorgeous probably my favorite leather strap on the market right now the next contender is the rolex explorer one reference 214270 i, I this is probably Outside of uh, maybe a, a Milgauss, one of the few Rolex sports watches you can find in an AD's case right now. I love it. This one probably, this Rolex sports watch probably does formal as, as well as it does sporty. Uh, and which says something in, in the world of Rolex sports watches. Uh, some people think it's a, a little sterile, but I think it's fantastic for being able to fly under the radar when you want it to. But also be able to, to hang your head high in the room with any uh, watch aficionado. Coming up next, the Omega Seamaster, the 300M. Many people know this as the Bond watch, what Pierce Brosnan wore in Goldeneye. Uh, 
what can we say that hasn't already been said? This is the piece that uh, really did bring Omega back to prominence in the 90s after uh, it really started to find far behind Rolex uh, during the court's crisis. Uh, so this is always a legendary piece and probably one of the best values in luxury watches. Everybody's going to recognize what it is, but it doesn't break the bank. We have the Tudor uh, Black Bay. Specifically, we're looking at the Blue Bezel version uh, and the ETA movement. This one features the, the old Tudor Rose logo at 12 o'clock. Probably my favorite of the Black Bay's edition, of which there are what seems about 100 iterations at this point. But this is my personal favorite, along with the Black Bay Black uh, uh, that uh, hit the market and was just on the market for a, a few years uh, in the last decade. Love this piece, and it's quite a bit thinner than the in-house movement tutors, uh, which is, always makes it a, a much more versatile piece in my mind. Then we have the Tudor Pelagos, the blue dial. This also has a, a ceramic bezel similar to the uh, Breitling Super Ocean, although it's a matte uh, ceramic bezel, which, which, which gives it a really unique appearance. In my mind, this is probably, from a tech standpoint, every bit uh, is innovative and interesting as a Rolex sub. Uh, but again, for half the price, it also uh, all of these come with a date, which uh, always gives it uh, about a full point uh, bump up in the rankings, in my opinion. Also from the Tudor Rolex family, we have the Tudor North Flag. Uh, this really stands out as well because you do have the integrated bracelet case look of uh, many of the 70s sports watches from a, at a much higher price point like the, the AP Royal Oak or the Patek Nautilus, but it's coming in uh, well under $4,000, even brand new. Also has a date, and what I think is, although it may not be the most interesting complication, certainly uh, one of the more useful in an on-dial power reserve. So, so you know if you do need to, to pop open the crown, give it a couple of spins, or, or shake your wrist however you power up your watch when it's losing juice. Uh, love this piece. It also has the uh, really unique yellow uh, accents around the dial uh, and on the power reserve. Next up, the Omega Speedmaster, the reserve, specifically talking about the reverse panda dial. Love this piece. I think it gives you kind of the very similar look to the Rolex Daytona. Uh, and it really does come in at a very uh, wearable 39 millimeter, so much more wearable than the Omega Speedmaster Professional. I no longer make this model, so I had to go in the pre-owned market to get it, but it's, it's a search that will be well worth it. And it shouldn't take you... Uh, too many Google searches uh, to find one that fits the bill. Our penultimate pick for, of the day is the Longines Legit Legend Diver. This is a, a re-edition of one of the Longines uh, original dive watches uh, from the first half of this century, or first half of last century, I should say. Uh, really has the unique 200 uh, meters of water resistance, uh, memorable uh, arrow, hour hand, uh, and two crowns, uh, one at two and one at four. So this, this is one of the more memorable uh, Longines in my opinion. And finally, we have the plucky underdog, the one that we had to debate for a few minutes whether or not it even counted as a luxury watch before deciding that anything over $200 really should be a luxury watch because it's going to do everything functionally that a watch under $200 does, uh, but does give you uh, the feel of uh, a watch that I think is significantly more expensive than the $600 you can find this for brand spanking new. Uh, specifically, we're looking at the Alpinist, which, which was a limited edition released by Houdinki last year. And th this is has beautiful cathedral hands, a starburst blue dial, and it, it's got an uphill battle to face, but, but I'm interested to see how, how it fares against some of the uh, bigger, heavier hitters that we have on the list. All right. Well, I got to say, I like all of these contestants. Um, I think it's time for the first impression, Rose. So 
uh, one a little kind of later. I don't know if it's because it's fresh in my mind or it, would look, it looked a little distinct to me. Um, I love the Longines Legend Diver. Okay. So I think we're going to put Longines. I think I'm going to give Longines a rose. I think uh, uh, Longines can relax for the first rose ceremony. Well, why are you giving it to it? Just, I is, think, it is this aesthetics? Is it price point? Yeah, so so it, it, it looks like a luxury watch. First yeah. order of business, right? If I'm yeah. going to be wearing my first luxury watch, I want other people to – uh, know that I have a luxury watch. Um, that I've that I've invested in a luxury. You think watch. people know Longines? Um, yeah. Is okay. that just because I'm a golf and tennis person, and they're kind of like in that space? Or I mean, we have a friend who got when they got married, their spouse got got them a Longines as their first luxury watch. So I think that this does Good. kind of fit the bill, yeah. and we have some precedents. If for any if for any other reason, oh, we're based in Chicago. If for any other reason, it doesn't sound American. I feel like that kind of makes it sound a little more luxurious, right? Um, we just lost. Little, we, we just lost little, some <laughs> view, viewers mid video, but okay. It's got a little international flavor to it. Okay. Um, if if I don't know the Longine name, I'm just, I'm assuming most people that would recognize a luxury watch would would know uh, at least have heard. If, of the yeah, ex- so I, I agree. It's not a Timex. No, I'm with um, you. The thing I really like about it, and I said this in our product review of, of this watch, um, I love that it kind of reminds me of a class of a, a speedometer on a classic car. Okay. Um, it has, you know, the the black dial is nice. It's classic. It, I I would assume because it's black, it can dress up pretty well. Um, I, I like I like the the gold accents, but I like the I like the fonting. Um, it, it seems it it screams vintage. To I, me. See, I don't think it works really well for a dress watch, but considering I think both of us our lifestyles outside of maybe a wedding or two in a busy year, but most of our friends are married at this point. We're not dressing formally that often that I think you wouldn't. It would be a waste for your first watch to do formal all that well. So I, I, I agree with that rationale. Would you? Would you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like if I'm if I'm the bachelor and I'm picking watches or women, right? I don't. I don't want to marry someone that I can only take out two or three times a year, right? Like I want to be. Oh. Are you gonna get into? <laughs> you know. You know. We don't want. I wouldn't want a wife that's too beautiful. You want to be able to live with them every day, right? Yeah, yeah. You, want to be, you know. You, want to you know. Want to you don't be... want to wake up at, at six o'clock in the morning. They're full, wearing fully in makeup with their head held hey, up so they don't I'm mess going, up their hair. I'm going to a ball game. To, oh, I can't really take them out. It's yeah, yeah, yeah. They're wearing that. heels to yeah, the Cubs yeah, game. Yeah, yeah. No, I don't okay. want to just bring out the watch at weddings. Yeah. I want to. I want to be able to. I want to be able to wear it. Wear it. Dress it. I want, I want to watch the dresses up well, but I also want a, an everyday watch. I gotta say, I think we navigated that very well okay, without good, being good, sexist. Good, and, and, right. I, and, and I'm sure people will tell us differently. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so on to the group date now. So we have to do a group date for this first episode. Um, I'm going to send, because we have a, a decent amount of blue dialed watches. Okay. Um, blue is in right now, right? Okay. So, somewhat at least. Um, but I, I, I kind of, for the this first rose ceremony, I kind of want to whittle down these blue dials so i'm going to send all of the blue dials out on a group date so you explain to me why what the, the differences between these blue dialed watches um and and what makes each of them at least in your opinion unique special why i should why i should care about each one well i i think the tutor let's start with the tutor pelagos We've talked a ton about Tudor, but 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 deservedly so. They've really dominated this sub five thousand dollar price category since they came back to the states uh, at the beginning of this decade. And the Pelagos is no different. I I don't love it from an aesthetic standpoint as much as I love the Black Bay. But I do think from a technical standpoint, you're getting a ton here. You're getting a ceramic bezel, as I said before. You're getting a date, which I think is awesome, and it's a date that really does blend into the dial yeah, it perfectly. Does. Doesn't throw off the symmetry of the dial the same way a Cyclops would on on a sub or uh, a Rolex GMT. Um, you get one of the most fantastic bracelets that you're gonna find at any price point. This is one that expands naturally. So if you slide this on over a wetsuit, which you will never do, but if you ever did, it's going to expand and contract as your wrist swells um, due to, to sweating and due to the pressure of being underwater. I'm going to start talking about diving when I don't know. I'll just know what the bracelet does. I can't talk about the technicalities of diving because I ain't going. But 
th that's a really cool piece of technology. Whereas the Rolex it's a story, if nothing else, exactly. Right? Whereas the Rolex uh, sub has some cool technology in his bracelet, but you have to take that off to make the adjustment uh, so that it fits your wrist better. This does it automatically, which I think is really, really interesting. And I, you go in any room, you're going to be the only person wearing this watch, but anyone that is a watch fan, fan is going to recognize this from across the room. You're going to have their respect, which I think is something you really want from the, your first luxury watch. Okay, great. What's the next one? Uh, the Seamaster 300M. Uh, again, uh, oh, if, if Tudor doesn't dominate this space, uh, it, it would probably be Rolex. I think Tudor does it a little bit better because that's really the only place Tudor plays, whereas Omega pretty much runs from you know 3000 all the way up to tens of thousands of dollars if you get into some of their precious metals. Um, but that being said, th this is a, a really recognizable name. Everybody knows Omega, even if you don't know watches. Well before we got into this business, I assume you were familiar with Omega yep. from your sports fandom and just from the fact that, I mean, we grew up watching Pierce Brosnan is our bond. Would you agree with yes, that? Yes, 100%. The same. Uh, and, at least our good bond. Uh, yes, it, 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 I agree. At least our good bond. Um, uh and so I really do think that this reminds me of playing Goldeneye when I was a kid. Certainly didn't wasn't doing it paint, wearing a three thousand dollar watch, but it does remind. Wasn't there a laser in it in that video game in in his watch? In the watch? In the video game? Wasn't that like? I don't remember. One of his that. gadgets? No, Has it been too long that. since we've seen yeah, this movie? Yeah, yeah. He might I mean, be our bond, like but we're not. Years. This is not a rewatchable <laughs> movie. Um, so, if anything, it complimented Pierce Brosnan that I remember him and not the laser. Yeah, I'll take that. I'll take that. Um, and I, I love this watch, particularly on a NATO. I think I think it. There's a lot of cool things you can do uh, with NATOs on this. I don't love the Seamaster's bracelet. I think there's kind of a lot going on, and I don't think it's good looking. Do you like it? Yeah, not as much as the Tudor Pelagos. If if we're if we're kind of juxtaposing them and going back to back to back, um, I, I, I didn't gravitate to it as much. Okay. Okay. And but I want to see everything. I want to let this. Okay, I, I appreciate a you bit. being open-minded about it. Uh, and, and then finally, we're going to go with the, the Super, Ocean, uh, Super Ocean Heritage, uh, the B twenty. Uh, I don't. Don't you dare forget the Seiko that's on this date. <laughs> the Seiko Alpinus, like uh, lagging behind, a uh, little quiet, little shy, uh, little yeah, cheap. It is <laughs> <laughs> cheap. That's harsh. Um, fine, and we got the Seiko after this, but the Breitling, uh, Breitling is so slept on, it's so disrespected, uh, but I think as a buyer, I think that's a good buying opportunity. You're going to be able to go to an AD, negotiate pretty aggressively, uh, because Breitling is, is, is really at a nadir uh, in its popularity. However, it's a brand I assume you also know coming into this, right? Yes. Are you familiar yes. with Breitling? Yes. Um, they, they've been very aggressive with their advertising over the last two decades. Most of it has missed the mark. I don't know why you're trying to sell watches with John Travolta as your main spokesperson. It's got it, it's, it's a really weird collaboration, but they're under new ownership and hopefully going away from some of those weird <laughs> partnerships. I, w what's weirder, John Travolta selling you a Breitling or Lady Gaga trying to sell you a Tudor? John Travolta, 100%. Yeah, so that says something that that's weirder. Uh, so, but that bad marketing decisions aside, this really is a beautiful watch. Breitling makes fantastic movements. I really think you would enjoy taking this out for a spin. And I really think the mesh bracelet really does stand out and is something that gives you a unique feel. And again, you from across the room, I'm gonna notice somebody wearing this watch, not just because it's 46 millimeters in diameter. <laughs> it's enormous. Uh, they need to scale this back a little bit and I think they're working on it. But some people like a bigger watch. As long as it doesn't go outside of the confines of your wrist, I think that's perfectly fine. Is this fun. like a guy dating a girl that's a little taller than him? Especially if the guy has a thin that's wrist. Bad. That's not bad. That's not bad. I like that. Yeah. So that that's an issue. Some people some people really like that. Uh, some people are have really like. Li I'm a guy who wears wears a 36 millimeter watch, so it's a big for me. But as a sports watch, I think it's perfectly fine. I don't think that's a reason to look the other way. And again, you can get these at a fantastic value. Great. And then finally, All right, the one you forgot about. When I so nearly disrespected was the Seiko Alpinist. I think this is a fantastic value. I, I hate to keep repeating myself, but you, you wouldn't have made the 12 if you're not that. So maybe I don't need to say it for all of these. But I do think this is 
Um, we're gonna get, we're gonna get the six hundred pound uh, gorilla out of the room. That's not the phrase, is it? The elephant, six hundred pound elephant. I mean, that's a, that's a little light for an elephant. Isn't it? Yeah, yeah, and that and that's why I he's got to go gorilla. Okay, out of the room. It says Seiko on the dial. It does, and so for many people who want to feel like they're wearing a luxury watch, you're probably not going to get that feel from other people in the room. That's because it says Seiko on the dial. Doesn't even say Grand Seiko yeah. on the dial. Um, so that's the downside. Nevertheless, Seiko makes a fantastic watch. Well, it's a fully uh, integrated manufacturer. They're fully vertical. They make everything that you see before you. This is a unique piece. Uh, cathedral hands are beautiful. I don't love cathedral hands, but I think they're inarguably beautiful. They're just not to my taste. Uh, and it's just a good looking watch. It's, it's a limited edition for a fair price. You won't regret this purchase, and I think you're going to wear it for six years. I don't know if you'll ever get tired of this watch. Even if you bought something far more expensive, I think you could go ahead, buy this as your everyday watch. And then pair it somewhere down the road with maybe a higher end watch that's a precious metal and really have a fantastic two watch combo that when you go dress here, you can do that. But if you want to wear something that is a nice watch, well made, that's a recognizable name, but you don't have to worry about knocking it around a little bit. We both have small kids that want to take your watch off, want to play with it, drop it. You don't have to worry about that. Still feel like you're wearing something nice, but not have to baby it. Okay, great. So I feel like I got to know these four blue dials a little bit better um, on the group date. One last thing we want to do, we want to do a one-on-one. -on -one, so I want to get to know a watch even a little more intimately than we kind of went through yeah. uh, with the blue dials. I'd like to start off uh, the first one-on-one -on -one date I'd like to do is just go real classic with the with the Rolex Explorer. Um, to me, it just looks like a watch that I would introduce to the aliens if they came down and said, hey, what is a watch that your culture has? What's, a, what's an example of a luxury watch? This is not knowing you anything wanted to, about it. I'd, I'd want to introduce them to this. Okay. Um, so I'd like to get to know this watch a little bit more. Tell me about the Rolex Explorer with the black dial. Okay, I'm, I'm going to give you three things I like and three things I, 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 I think are things that you want to think about and want to be okay. concerned with. Uh, and I can speak pretty uh, from... Uh, experience with this watch because I owned it at one point. Um, it sounds kind of weird if we carried this analogy out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but we won't take it so far that it gets weird. Use your imagination. Yeah, so, a little bit. Again, this is the reference. This is a 214270 39mm ex Explorer. So it's a perfect size. 39mm is perfect uh, to, for dress occasions, for sports occasions. Uh, I, I think it's beautiful. It has a high polished steel bezel, which gives it kind of a, a classier look. Downside to that is going to get scuffed up a little bit. But let me go back to the three things I like, three things I don't before I go okay. too deep into okay. this. The three, th let's start positive. It's It screams, it has all of the hallmarks of a Rolex sports watch with the exception of it doesn't have the Cyclops for the date because the watch doesn't have a date. Uh, you have the uh, Mercedes hands, which are so beautiful, so distinct, has a gloss dial, looks like a GMT, looks like a sub in so many ways, but you're going to get it for probably you know, three to four thousand dollars less than you would for either of those pieces. Uh, and you can still find these uh, in a, an AD's case. Second thing I like about it, it does have a clasp that you can pop open and you can extend uh, the bracelet for about uh, half of a millimeter, which does give you, as your wrist swells, I would pop that open, uh, expand it as the day cooled, as the weather cooled down, or in the morning when my wrist was a little smaller than it would be at the end of the day, you collapse it, is so what really does give you a really snug, comfortable fit. Doesn't have the expandable and, and micro adjustments that the Rolex Sub does, but it does have that nice feature. Uh, and then finally, thing I love about it is that there's only one version of it. I think this kind of cuts both ways for some people, but it kind of reminds me of the Ford, uh, what was it, the Model T. The You can get a Model T in any color you want, so long as it's black. <laughs> you yeah, know, it yeah. only there there is the iconic Explorer. They, the only change they've really made over the last few years is taking it from 36 to 39 millimeter, uh, and, and to just, to, just to modernize the sizing of it a bit. Uh, but that's it. This watch has stayed the same for a long time. And, and the final thing I really like about it is it has a ton of history. 
this is a watch that, that Sir Edmund Hillary uh, took with him when he climbed Mount Everest. Uh, the first person to, uh, to do that uh, had an explorer with them. So that tells you the kind of versatility, uh, the kind of ability to withstand very cold temperatures, very hot temperatures, uh, and, and still keep ticking. It has that Rolex uh, ruggedness. Downsides. I, 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 the high gloss stainless steel bezel is a scratch magnet. Uh, it's it's going to get dinged up. And if you're the kind of person that, that's bothered by that, that's something to be aware of. Uh, another downside, that can be a little boring. It, it's a black dial. There, there, there's no complication to it. Uh, there, it, it, it really, it is what it is. It has no unnecessary complications. Like, you know, it doesn't have a timing bezel that you're never going to use anyways. Right. So I do think it's stripped down, which does make it so flexible. So as you can notice, I'm sure all of the negatives really can double as positives with this watch, depending on what you're looking for. So I really don't think there is an objective. This is a downside to this watch. In so many ways, for some people, it's going to absolutely be the perfect watch. But for those exact same reasons, for some people, they might find it a little bit of a snoozer. I disagree. I think it's a beautiful first watch, and it's something you can wear in any setting without feeling flashy. There's no gold to it. There's not a lot of high polished surfaces outside of the bezel. It, if you want to, if you want it to 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 show off, you can throw a couple beads, beaded bracelets on it. If you're a bracelet guy, I don't think you are. And you probably wouldn't do that. But you're also not a flashy person, so that's why I think it's a good fit for you. What yeah. do you think? Yeah, no, I, I love it. Uh, there's no, there's nothing about what you said. Um, that that while we're while we still have twelve contestants here, that would make me want to eliminate this. Um, the only thing that like perked my ears up a little bit from a negative standpoint is um, it can get dinged up a little bit. But I'm okay with a watch with with a few blemishes, right? If we're kind of extending the analogy, it, like it's okay to not be perfect. Um, and and I think that every all all of the positives are solid. They're just they're just everything about it is solid. I am not going to with twelve watches left throw out a watch that Sir Ed, Edmund Hillary thought was was good enough for him when he was climbing Mount Everest. So yeah. um, I am going to give a rose okay. to the Rolex Explorer, and we're gonna move on to the our first rose ceremony. All right, Andrew. You've given out two roses, one to the Longines Legend Diver and the other to the Rolex Explorer One. You have seven roses left, and you're going to need to send three home. Okay. Are you, are you ready? Yes. Uh, my first rose, or my third rose, uh, I would like to give to the Breitling Super Ocean. Okay. Love the blue dial. Love that uh, you said it was really underrated. If a watch enthusiast tells me something's really underrated, I like that. Okay. Um, um, so Breitling Super Ocean gets the rose. I like uh, that decision. You called it Zenith. I'm going to give my rose to the Zenith El Primero. Is that just because I know the TV better than the... No, I, I, think, I think technically, I think th that you are correct. I think the English pronunciation is Zenith. Okay, but... Zenith El Primero, you get a rose. Love the chronograph. Uh, just a personal thing. It just looks kind of more like a luxury watch to me. Love the subtlety and the nuance of the three different colors. How do you feel about the, the fact that it's manual wine? Uh, just... I'll learn to like it. <laughs> okay, okay. okay. Uh, or not, hopefully I'll learn to like it. We'll see. That, that's not a good... For somebody that, 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 that... We're carrying this... Listen, Zenith, don't get greedy. You're on to the next Okay, okay? fair enough. Uh, Tudor Black Bay okay. gets the rose. That, that was uh, an easy call. Classic, this, this was going through love, the next yep, round. Love the fact that it's in the Rolex family. Just looks like a great classic one on the show this is where the the show that thought the, the watch that thought it was a front runner it was kind of salty that it didn't get the first impression rose so it'll take your stupid rose right now but it's gonna you're gonna, gonna hear I'm gonna about need it to give it a one-on-one -on -one yeah yeah okay. yeah okay uh tudor pelagos again love the blue dial loved how it popped on the on the group date juxtaposed to 
a lot of the other blue dials love that it's in the Rolex family, but I get a nice classic looking watch with a little bit of personality with that blue, which happens to be my favorite color. Now just between this, us, I won't share with the contestants, do you have a lean between the two Tudor and the Black Bay? No, the I'd, like to let, I'd like to let it marinate. Okay, I only compare those because it's both Tudor dive watches, uh, so I was interesting. So Maybe, but, but, that, that, I'm thinking about putting all the Tudors on our on the next group date for the next okay. episode, but to, to subscribe that could get kind of nasty. Subscribe to our channel. <laughs> it could, it could. Okay. Family members hate each other. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Tudor North Flag, the third Tudor I'm going to give a rose to. So all three uh, Tudors have survived the first rose ceremony. Um, it's, it's different. I didn't immediately respond to it, though I do love color accenting. Um, but I don't know enough about it yet, so I want to I want to keep it in the context. I kind of feel like the Tudor, the North Flag, is kind of like when they have the 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 black contestant on The Bachelor, and you know <laughs> they're not gonna they're not here for long. But you can't kick them off the first round, otherwise people think you might be racist. So you got to kind of push the Tudor North Flag on. This doesn't have a chance of winning. That's how I felt about the JLC reversal. Okay, we'll see about okay, okay, okay. It's fair enough. Up. That's interesting. <laughs> uh, the uh, next rose is going to... I have two left, right? I yes. Have two roses left? That is correct. So the next rose is going to go to the Speedmaster Reduced, the Reverse Panda dial. This is. I think it's kind of weird that you're so into this watch. It's, it, to me, it's perfectly so, fine. It's fine. It's cheap. <laughs> cheap. The, the, the Seiko Alpine is just cheap <laughs> relative to luxury watches. Seiko These are all... Did, I got to know Seiko a little bit okay. in this episode. I didn't get to know this at all, so I don't necessarily want to make a mistake by throwing this off. I'd like to get to know it a little bit. Though. Okay, okay. Um, I love. It's not a bad watch. I'm just kind of surprised that it's hanging in there. there there's just no, there weren't a lot of chronographs in here, and so okay. I didn't want to. I didn't want to throw. Does this need to also be a group already. date? It might be. I'm thinking about it. Okay, okay. Um, and so now, final rose. You have one rose left. This is going to come down between. The Seiko Alpinist. Yeah. And it's going to be the Rolex Explorer 2. To the, the, the opposite ends of our price point spectrum. Because you can get the Seiko for about 600 bucks brand spanking new. You're looking at about 6,000 bucks plus for the Rolex Explorer 2. So this is this is not choosing between different types of apples. This is this is gonna this is interesting to me. And this is a this decision is based on aesthetics. Okay. I'm not necessarily thinking about price at this point. Okay. Um, we'll wait for the hometowns for that to start really digging okay. into price okay. point. Um, I, I, the Rolex Explorer to the dial is so cool to me, and and I get it. I gotta keep. I gotta keep Rolex as many Rolexes in the discussion as possible for my first luxury watch. I'm gonna give the my last rose to the Rolex Explorer too. Um, so the three not getting a rose. Did you have given it like two seconds, like a like? But I feel well, like I can you edit did. that in. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, that's that's all post production. Yeah. Okay. Stuff. Okay. Fine. 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 Um, so the three not getting a rose, and tell me if you vehemently disagree with any okay. of this. Um, I got. I wanted to. I wanted to eliminate a couple that I met on the group date. Um, so I, I got rid of two of the blue dials. Um, the Omega Seamaster Pro and the Seiko Alpinist. Um, to me, the, even, the Alpinist even wasn't that it was a Seiko. I mean, it, it was a little bit. Um, I knew it was such a lower price point. If I'm going to go for a first luxury watch, I want to splurge a little more than three to $500. Um, I didn't like, something felt off about the three o'clock and the four o'clock the crowns. crowns. Is that... No, it's kind of uh, weird. Yeah. It's kind of weird. Like you wake up in the morning, you don't know why you're feeling a little off. It's, and so, but... it's a, like, you add some chunk to the wrist that, for, for what purpose? And no. it's not it's not symmetrical. If you're going to give me a 4 o'clock, maybe give me a 2 o'clock. I don't know. I, no, I'm with you. Um, I'm with you. And then the JLC Reverso. And the JLC Reverso is just, I just do not like rectangular faces. I mean, I knew it was not long for this world. I had hoped that it that, that I could work on you, kind of kind of the way like at Chris Hansen, yeah, kind yeah, of yeah. get you to think about it a yeah, little. Yeah, it exposed the tattoo a little much, you know, the, the engraving that you can have on that. Yeah. It's kind of like kind of like the girl with the dragon yeah i think that's interesting <laughs> and, and honestly i hope i think you made some good eliminations i think that's the only one that i was like i really this deserved to really be 
uh, to get more screen time than it did. Certainly over the uh, Omega Seamaster reduced, and in my opinion, I would have I would have sent the North flag home. I earlier, thought about it. Uh, over I the like reversal. the color accenting though, and I like that it's in the Rolex family. Okay, okay, I, I respect that. These are your decisions. You're going to be the one's going to have to live with it. <laughs> so don't let anybody think anybody says talk you out of it. I because I, the, the decisions are well thought of, and I'm excited to see what we got uh, on the next show. Okay, great. So nine contestants left. Subscribe to our YouTube channel if you want to kind of see uh, how this how this all plays out, and hope to see you next time.